every spider lost in this great big world, there is a warm place with friendly room service, delicious food, and a warm place to stay the night. This is Spider Bed and Breakfast. And introducing Centipede Motel. Scutigera coleoptrata, commonly known as the house centipede, is one of the creepiest animals I have ever come across. As I zoom in here a little bit before it grabs that cricket, you'll be able to see 30 long skinny legs and a set of antennae that are super long. These are not like typical centipedes. Normal centipedes have shorter legs and shorter antennae and are a little stockier but these guys look like something straight out of an alien movie. You'll see that they attack almost like a snake, using all of their legs to wrap around their prey and using those mandibles in the front to bite them with a powerful bite and sting. As I zoom in, you'll be able to see that near the back, the back legs are shaped almost like antennae, quite like the front. And this is something that all centipedes have and they use it to distract predators. So hopefully the predator will attack the back end, only wounding the centipede and leaving the head and all the vital organs intact. This is an incredible animal that actually has quite good eyesight. If you can see in the front, it has two black spots right by the antennae that are really, really good as far as centipede eyesight goes. Most centipedes have a structure very similar to scorpions with, with multiple eyes that are very small, that don't do very much, and they rely heavily on vibration. So with good eyesight and really long antennae and legs to sense other vibrations, these are incredible predators. But I did promise that this would be an episode of Spider Bed and Breakfast, and so you guys are in for a treat, because we also have a spider. Now, Agelinopsis is a species that we've covered before on this, but this is one from Michigan, and it's really large. If you guys don't remember, a Gelenopsis means grass spider. They are funnel web making spiders that have non-sticky webs that they use for vibration. I thought this would be cool after the wolf spider we had on last week's episode. You can see those two dark lines on the carapace that are very similar to those on a wolf spider. But as you watch this one attack, you'll see that it's very different from the way a wolf spider attacks. It doesn't attack until there's a vibration, and then it comes in with that powerful bite. Because wolf spiders have their great eyesight that they use to track their prey, and they'll just go in for one swift attack. But these ones, at least as all, all, every time I've seen them, they have a fight with their prey, and they use the vibration on their web to do almost everything. They're amazing. But like every time we have to do on Spider Bed and Breakfast, we had to let them go. If you look there, that's the carnage left by the house centipede, just decimated that cricket. And I'll reach in here, and these this is the back, so I don't need to worry about being bitten. Those are the back antennae looking legs. And then, I'll just take it out. Again, this thing just destroyed its prey. Centipedes are very nasty killers. And these guys, if you ever see them, you can handle them. They are not very likely to bite a human. They're mostly really skittish and fast. You'll see that I'm struggling to keep him on my hand. But you can get a good look at the beautiful stripes on this animal and maybe an even better look at those big eyes I was talking about earlier. It was an amazing opportunity to get to work with one of these. And if you guys ever see one, I don't know why more people don't keep them as pets because they're, they really are amazing. And I'm so glad to be, have been able to find one. And after letting the centipede go, we had to let the Ganelinopsis grass spider go as well. This, this species of spider is really, really cool. I love the webs they make. It's just part of the reason that I love spiders in the first place is they make these amazing little worlds that they live in. And funnel web spiders have to be one of my favorites. As I pull this one out, you'll be able to see that its color is different than that of a wolf spider. It's more yellow and orange and the pattern on its abdomen is different as well. 
But once I get it to zoom in on my camera and get a freeze frame of this, you'll be able to see the biggest difference between these two species of spiders. Grass spiders do not have the two big powerful eyes on top of a wolf spider and instead have two rows of four smaller eyes that aren't actually very good at seeing. They rely on vibrations in a similar way to scorpions and tarantulas. Here's another freeze frame where you can see it a little better. And despite what a lot of people think, these are not dangerous to humans at all and are mostly just really skittish and run away at the slightest bump like you'll see this one do here as I bump it with the camera a little bit. I was super happy to be able to find a huge one of these in Michigan and to be able to work with them again and to see the beautiful houses they make. Thank you guys so much for watching this super episode. Make sure to subscribe for more 8-Legged Cuteness Weekly. Please check out our Facebook page if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.